Hello and welcome to Skills and Automation. My name is Ash and today we're going to look at some quick and easy tips that I use in all my VBA code. I wouldn't classify any of these as groundbreaking, but they do make it more convenient to write, debug and execute code. I didn't know any of these when I started coding VBA. So each of these tips and tricks were a welcome surprise when I did eventually learn them. And I hope they will be the same for you. Let's get right to it. First up, worksheet code name. This is a trick I use in literally every one of my macros because every macro will be based off a worksheet. A worksheet is an object and the traditional way to refer to it would be where data is the name of one of my worksheets. If the code is going to be elaborate, we could even assign a variable to hold the worksheet. Name a worksheet variable, assign it to the data worksheet. And now we could use this variable going forward. But we can save these two lines of code by referring to the worksheet using the worksheet code name. The worksheet code name can be set by coming to the project window, clicking on the worksheet and heading over to its properties. The very first property, which is name, is the worksheet code name. Let's set this to WS data. Great. Now we can eliminate these two lines of code and just refer to the worksheet directly using the worksheet code name. Let's run this. We don't get any error, which means that the code is directly accepting the worksheet code name. This has one huge advantage. If the user happens to change the actual worksheet name, it won't affect our code. So I have two worksheets here, data and lookup. Let's change this code to select a cell on our data worksheet. Now we'll change this worksheet name, change it back to sheet one. Let's run this code. It runs without an error. And we can see the cell A2 is selected. So changing the worksheet name did not have any effect because our code now is no longer dependent on the actual name of the worksheet. So this trick doubles up as a great error handler as well. One thing to note is that we can refer to the worksheets using their code names only within the current workbook. That is the file that holds our macro. If we try to access a worksheet in another Excel file, we will need to use the actual worksheet name. I can't believe I spent a few initial years in VBA not aware that this option existed. If you don't want to run a line of code or if you just want to add in some text or comments within our code, we can add an apostrophe at the start of the line like this and VBA will ignore this line and move on to executing the next line. We refer to this as commenting the code. And if you want to comment out an entire block of code, then we will need to add an apostrophe to every line like this. Worst part though is removing the comments. We need to delete each apostrophe one by one, which can be a bit of a bother. Delete this, delete this, delete this, delete this, delete this. Oh my God. Delete this, delete this, delete this. And we're done. I comment out full blocks of code quite a lot when I'm in the building stage and I'm testing sections of my code. But thankfully, there is a much easier way to do this. That is using comment blocks. And if you have never used them, then chances are that they're not visible in your standard toolbar. In that case, we need to go and add them in. Go to view, toolbars, customize, select edit, scroll down in the right window. We can see the comment and the uncomment block. Let's select, drag and place them in our toolbar and the uncomment block as well. Press close and remember to save your file before you exit. That way these blocks will remain in your standard toolbar the next time you open the VBA editor as well. Okay, so how do we use this? Simple, select the block of text that you want to comment out. In our example, there are two loops. The first loop is a lookup and grabs some value from another sheet. And the second loop just assigns gray background color to each alternate row. Suppose we haven't completed the first loop or we are not confident about it yet, but we still want to test out our second loop. Easy. We can select the first loop, press the comment block. Great. Each line gets commented. We can now run this macro. Since the first loop is commented, it'll get skipped over. Play. Great. The macro ran and the second loop did its job correctly. Now we can remove the comments from the first loop. Select it again. This time, press the uncomment block. Great. And the apostrophes have all disappeared. These are a real time saver. And I'm sure that you'll land up using these a lot. You can find these options available in other MS products such as SQL Management Studio. But unfortunately for me, I started out with VBA and wasn't aware of their existence for quite some time. 
If you run a sub, every line of code will get executed from the start to the end. Now suppose you have a loop that is designed to run over 100 rows and that loop has some logic and you doubt that that logic is 100% correct. Now, you want to test your code for the first time. Would you prefer to close your eyes, cross your fingers, press play, run the full sub and hope that everything works well? It may sound funny, but this is what I would do when I started out. That is, until the day I learned that you could step through your code, run each line one by one and exit out of the sub if you spot an error. Let's look at our example. We are going to perform a VLOOKUP style operation. We will loop through this data range and for every product in column E, we will grab the corresponding product group or the product family from column B in our lookup sheet. Here we grab our product code from the main data range and in this inner loop, this is where we grab our product code from the lookup sheet. And in this if statement, if they both match, then we will paste the corresponding product group value in column K in the data worksheet. Now, instead of running the full loop, we can step through our code to see if the first iteration of the loop is working. If it is, then we can go ahead and run the rest of the loop. To step through the code, keep your cursor within the sub and press F8. The yellow arrow or the yellow highlighted line indicates the line of code that is about to be executed. Keep pressing F8 to run through each line of code. Now we've come to the loop. Let's continue and see if the lookup operation gives the right result. So we'll step through this one by one. We can say we have a match out here. Great, we get a match for a first product code. So it must be working. And if we are happy, we can press play and finish off the rest of the sub. Alternatively, if we saw an error, we could just press stop and exit the sub. This technique is really helpful in debugging complex code. Before we move on, let's look at an extension of this trick. We don't need to step through each individual line of code. We can skip a few parts and jump only to the relevant part that we need to test. Let's consider the example from the previous section where we only wanted to test the second for loop. In that example, we commented out the first for loop. Instead, we can begin to step through our code, press F8, populate the initial variables that we need. Now we don't want to run this first loop. What we can do is just drag this yellow arrow and move it all the way to the start of the second loop. So we are effectively jumping over the entire first loop. And now we can continue to step through the second loop. Gray lines are populating. Okay, we've seen enough. This code seems to be working. We don't need to run through the rest of it. We can just exit out of this right now by pressing stop. This is another useful debugging tool. Obviously, please use this with caution. That is, don't skip over anything that is required for the next part of code to execute properly. Example, these initial variables. One last thing to note is that you can even drag this yellow arrow back upwards. For example, suppose you correct something in a loop and want to start the loop again without rerunning the entire sub. In the previous section, in order to test the first loop, we step through each individual line of code before the loop. There is a faster way to do this. It would be great if the macro could run this initial code and somehow stop at the start of the first loop, after which we can cautiously step through each line that we want to test. And we can achieve this through breakpoints. Before you run the code, place your cursor in the line of code that you want to stop at. So you want to stop out here. I'll place my cursor here and press F9. Or we can click in this gray column beside our code and the same line and the dot will appear. What this will do is stop this code right before this particular line is about to be executed. Okay, we'll leave our breakpoint here and run the code. All the lines of code above this maroon dot have been executed. And this yellow arrow and the yellow highlighted line indicates that we are now in debug mode and the code has come and stopped right before this particular line is about to be executed. And from this point on, we can do what we did in the previous section. That is, just step through each line individually, pressing F8. And if you're happy with the way this code is executing, we can just remove this breakpoint and run the rest of the code. And on a last note, we can place as many breakpoints as we want. So for this last part, 
we put a breakpoint before the start of the first loop and before the start of the second loop. Let's play this. Our codes now come to the start of the first loop. I'm going to remove this breakpoint by pressing on this maroon dot. Run the rest of the code. So this loop ran and now it's come and stopped right before we start the second loop. Okay, let's remove this breakpoint as well and run the rest of the code. Awesome. We can assign and use variables to store temporary values that we want to access later. I use them all the time, but sometimes while debugging, we may want to know what's the value of the variable that's being populated. We can do this by hovering our cursor over the variable name after it's been assigned a value. Let's check this out in our example. Suppose we want to check the value of the last row to see whether it's indeed the last row of our data set. We're kind of testing whether this line of code is giving us the right result. So let's step through this code until we reach this line. Press F8, keep pressing F8, press F8 one more time. Now this variable has been populated. Let's hover our cursor over it. We can see that it has been assigned the value of 34, which is indeed the last row of our data set. But there is a small limitation here. We can only see the first 77 characters when we hover over. There's a trick to see the last characters as well. Now 77 characters is a lot and you'll probably not have variables populating such high values. But we'll classify this information as good to know and use when needed. So the value of the first product code is greater than 77 characters. I'm going to put a breakpoint where our first product code is being populated. Let's run this code. Now press F8 once so that the variable gets populated. Now let's hover over the variable name. We can see that the last bit is cut off. Press Ctrl and then hover over the variable. Great. And now we can see the last 77 characters. An alternative to the hover technique is debug.print. Here, we can print the value of our variables into our image at window, which is right down here below. If you can't see the image at window, you can go to view and click on image at window. Let's do the same thing as before. We want to find out the value that this last row variable populates to. So just after the assignment of the variable, we can write the command debug.print and the variable name. Let's place our breakpoint after the debug.print statement and run the code. Great. We can see the value of the last row variable being populated in the image window. Now the hover technique only shows the value of one variable at a time and only while you're hovering over it. But debug.print can print out as many values as you want and they will stay in the image window until you clear them. So let's debug.print this last row variable as well. We'll clear out the previous result. And just to make this a bit more intuitive, let's put in some statements here. Okay, let's place a breakpoint after the last debug.print statement, run the code, and great, both the results got printed out. If you want to search for a particular text inside your code, we can just press Ctrl F and search for it. This is great and all, but for this section, I would like to point our attention to this replace option. Now suppose you have the need to change the name of a variable after you've already used it multiple times in your code. Normally, you would need to search for each instance of the variable manually within the code and change it. This leaves much room for error. You could miss out changing one variable name and that would have its own consequences. A better way to change the variable or rather any name in the code would be to use the replace option. Let's look at one example which I often use. In this instance, we are finding the last row twice. Once for the data worksheet and the next time for the lookup worksheet. We can manually type in the lines of code to find the first last row. But the code to find the next last row is pretty much the exact same. So instead of manually typing this out, what we can do is just copy these same two lines of code, paste them below. Now select the lines within which you want to change the variable names. Press Ctrl F. Type in the value that you want to change. Now, very important, make sure that this selected text radio button is selected because we don't want to alter the rest of the code in the module. Click the replace option. Now enter the value that you want to replace it with and click replace all. Great, we can see that four replacements were made. Click OK and all our instance of data was changed to LK. This is a great trick for reusing code. Now, 
Let's look at a procedure level change. For the lookup worksheet, I'm using the worksheet code name WSLK, which is not very intuitive. I want to change this to say WS lookup. Let's first change the worksheet code name. We've seen how to do this in the first section of this video. Come to the project window, click on the lookup worksheet, go to the properties, alter the code name. Now we need to go into the procedure and we need to change every instance where we have used this worksheet code name. Press Ctrl F. If you want to change WS LK and replace it with WS Lookup. We have only one procedure in this module here, so we can keep this current module radio button ticked. But if there were multiple modules, we could select the current project. Click Replace All. We can see five replacements are made. And now every instance of the WS LK has been updated to WS Lookup. This is a very handy trick. Use this with caution. Only replace unique words. Otherwise, you might land up replacing and amending more than you want to. If you type in wrong or incomplete code and try to enter out of that line, you will immediately get a pop-up message saying compile error with an annoying little notification sound. Let's try that now. We'll remove this variable name and press enter. And the pop-up message with the notification sound appears as expected. This is okay if you're a beginner and want to be aware of any syntax errors as they occur. But it can get very irritating at times, especially if you have your headphones on. One common instance is the if statement, where you begin to write the if statement with a variable in it and exit out of the line to copy and paste the variable. The moment you exit out of the line, you will get that annoying little sound. But the good news is that we can avoid this. Go to Tools, Options, and untick this Auto Syntax Check. Click OK. Now, we won't get the error and are free to build our code without any disturbances. Let's check it out. Delete this. Click outside. We didn't get the pop-up message. Neither did we get that sound. If there is a syntax error, like in this case, the line of code will go red, indicating that there is an error out here. And we won't be able to run this code until all these syntax errors are checked. For example, let's try to run this and we get syntax error. Having a check on the entire code level, I can live with that. But having a check on each line is a little too much. This last tip is another staple feature in all my code. When you're starting out in VPA, it's really satisfying to press play and see the screen flip and flutter as the macro works through the code. Each time your macro interacts with Excel, such as paste a value or go to a different worksheet, the screen will update. But if you're looking for ways to give a more professional appearance to your macro, you want to limit the screen updating, especially if someone else is going to use your macro. To do this, we can turn off the screen updating at the very start of the code. Like this. And turn it back on when you're about to exit the sub. So now we'll set this to true. This will not only stop the screen from fluttering, but will also improve the speed of your macro. Let's check out our example. We'll remove the screen updating options just to run this code in its raw format. Let's press play. We can see the screen moving and that's done. Now let's turn these options back on. That is remove the comments. And let's rerun this macro. There, the screen moved a lot lesser. There was just one blip and it did seem to run a bit faster as well. You could always place timers and check how much speed you're actually saving up on. And in a similar concept, we have display alerts, which we can turn off and on as well. This will turn off any Excel messages and is handy when you want to close a workbook without actually saving it. And there are many more similar options to this, but we won't get into it in this video. Application or screen updating is by far the most common and necessary one that you should be including in your macro code. And that's all the tips for this video. Hope that there were some in there that you were not aware of. These have proven very useful to me, making my coding experience much more convenient. How about you? Do you think if there are any that I've missed out? Please do share them in the comments below. And if you found this useful, please like and subscribe. Thanks and see you in the next one.